Now, a lot of you know the story, but I need to repeat this because I believe it applies to this. As you know, we started our business back um, we first got married. We've been in financial services since before we were married. Uh, 40 years now, I've been involved in financial services. And so we, we started our own company. Uh, I won't go through all the long, long story of being in debt and God showing us uh, to have the kingdom and then creating our businesses and creating wealth and all. We learned a lot, learned a lot, learned a lot. But before we started to pastor, uh, as we learned how the kingdom operated, our business became the number one office out of 5,000 offices. And we had 300 reps all across the United States. So pretty incredible story, right? But when God called us to pastor, I knew that this was going to take my energy. I mean, everything kind of slowed down. I, I stopped hiring outside the state of Ohio. We began to readjust our business because we just couldn't, I, I couldn't be involved with it. But we, we, it kept going. I even asked the Lord, should I stop the business? But he said, no, don't stop your business. But we had to readjust, you know, or did we? Hmm, good question. Anyway, I've told this before, but we use various vendors in our business. And one of the vendors had annual conventions where if you did a certain amount of production, you would get to go, they would pay your way to this convention. It was the annual convention. They'd have their... Uh, the top 10 or the top people up on platform, and they'd get, they'd get $100,000 worth of bonuses. And it was amazing that $100,000 worth of bonuses, I never, well, for 14 years, I did about $4 million worth of production. Since we started Pastor, we were doing about $4 million of production with this one company. Now, it took about 10 million to qualify. It took 10 million of production to qualify for, the, for their, their, their top 10 with the $100,000 bonus check. I, it's strange. I never thought of being in the top 10. I was content in watching because I thought I couldn't do it because I was pastoring, I was busy. So I never had the thought to ask someone how I could do it. I never had the thought to say, okay, I, that's, I need to be there. What do I need to change to get there? I never had the thought because my no training was kicking in that I was content to sit by and clap and cheer those that did it when don't you know, I would have loved to have the $100,000 bonus check. Hmm? And so many of us are like that. So many of us are like that. Until the day after 14 years, the Lord spoke to me in that meeting while they were up there and we were clapping. He said, why aren't you up there? Why aren't you up there? I want you up there. He said, I want people to see my greatness in you. And I thought, <laughs> why, why, why? Well, first off, I don't know how to do that because how am I going to jump up to 14 years of doing around 4 million and jumping up to over 10? And this is already March. I don't know how to do that. I mean, obviously I'm maxed. I mean, we're busy, right? I mean, we're busy. Daily television, church, family, a lot. I mean, we're busy. And, uh, but he, he said, why aren't you up there? So during the night, sowed our seed and said, you've got to show us how to do that. And he gave me a dream. And of course I've taught this before, but he said, Seize the moment. And I knew what it meant when he said it, seize the moment. I had to change how I thought about how I handled the business. Now, we did not change any marketing, zero. Did no, no additional marketing at all. But we became more intentional. When people called, we were very quick. We changed our processes. Everyone say, change our processes. Change process. Yeah, say it again. Change your processes. Yeah, if you've studied the laws I've taught the uh, of acceleration, once your capacity is capped, you're done. You have to change your processes. So we had to change our processes, which meant that we'd have to react quickly, intentionally, and we changed our policy. That anyone, of course, we handle a lot of investments, insurance work, we're dealing with clients, and we made a rule, a policy for the whole company that if you're going to invest money with us, we're going to have a face-to-face -face meeting, not a phone call, and we are in every, every state. 
So you can imagine how this changed how we did business. If someone called and they were going to, we had a minimum, if they were talking about investing over $50,000, we demanded, we had, we, will not, we had to have a face-to-face meeting with them. So we had jets flying out. People, I mean, commercial, we, our reps would take off, you know. I would take off. So if someone called from California and said, hey, I want to talk about investing. I don't care if they, I mean, we wanted them to meet us where they, no one's going to invest a million dollars over the phone, right? So we made a policy that we would meet them in person as fast as we could get there. And that began to change a lot of things because we would, and of course, all, they didn't always use us as a company, but we at least had the chance to present our side of the story and to, to meet them as a person that they would, they would meet us. So we changed that. And so we made it uh, that year. We did over 10 million. Incredible. I can't even put into words how that felt. We got the hundred thousand dollars in bonuses and a trip to Bora Bora. We took our entire family, our office staff, and uh, that was absolutely life-changing, life-changing, life-changing. And we made that, we made that, uh, that a level six years after that, every year after that. Wait a minute, so 14 years, you did 4 million, you missed it, and you got to clap and watch everyone do it, and then all of a sudden you changed something, you did it every year after that? Yep. Don't you know I could have done it a lot earlier, right? You're right. The second year we made it, they raised it to over 12 million. Of course, now this is one vendor, so it raised our production in every area of our company. And that trip was to Budapest, Hungary. That was an amazing city. And uh, so we go up on stage, you know, we get to, they recognize us. Now, some of the guys that had been there for several years, of course, who knew who we were, we had lunch there uh, with them, some of the reps, and the, the guest speaker at that convention, who was a marketing expert, was sitting at our table with us. So the rep asked me, oh, Gary, how did you jump from 4 million to over 10 million, over, over 12? How did you do that? What, tell me how you did it. And so I just said, well, let me tell you about the kingdom of God. Let me tell you about being intentional. Let me tell you what God showed us. And of course, they're waiting for the, you know, I did this marketing campaign. I did that, whatever. But uh, I began to tell him. And this marketing person was sitting there and she was asking questions. Well, that night we had a cruise on the Danube River at night. It's gorgeous. And as I was walking on the deck, the marketing, that marketing expert that was the guest speaker at the conference was talking to a group of people. And I heard her say this. She said, I heard the most amazing story today at lunch, how this guy went from $4 million to over $10 million. And she was going on and on about this. And she was, oh, there he is right there. And she brought me in the conversation. She said, I like the word, this amazing story. How many like amazing? Yeah, it caught the expert's attention, man. I'll tell you, God wants to do amazing things with you, right? That's so awesome. But why was I so content to be a bystander when I had the same opportunity as all the others? Because I'd already said no to that. I was content with not making it. I thought I had a good excuse. I was busy, right? Never entertaining the thought that I could do it or figure out how to get it done. Ephesians chapter 3.20 says, How t- Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that's at work within us. Amen. Here's a quote out of my book. I'm writing this here out of my book. Sadly, I was 40 years of age when I first saw those Rocky Mountains. To say I was overwhelmed would be an understatement. But I can remember being there and thinking, why didn't I do this earlier? This book is called Unfinished Business. It's about going someplace that you should have already been to, but for the same reasons I never made it to the mountains, you have hesitated. Your no training said you could not afford it, or you did not know how to do it, or various other reasons you used to talk yourself into being ordinary and average. But I want to remind you what the Lord said to me that night. Why are you not up there I want you in the top 10. I want you to get that $100,000 bonus check. I want people to see my greatness in you. So my word to you is 
why not you? Why not you? So where do you want to go? That's the first question you have to answer. Where do you want to go? In the 1800s, not many ways to get around except the horse, wagon train. If you wanted to go to Sacramento, California from the Missouri River, it would take you about uh, four months, about four months. Now, between 1835 and 1855, about 10,000 people died taking that journey. About 4% of them died from Indian attacks. You would say, well, who would do that? Go across raging rivers, mountains, all this danger. Well, hundreds of thousands of people did it. Hundreds of thousands. Now, if you didn't want to go across wagon train, you could go down by boat down to Panama before the canal, and you would get off one boat, take your stuff across land to another boat on the Pacific. If you like poisonous snakes and malaria, that would work. <laughs> and that would take you four months. Or if you didn't like that, you could take a boat clear down around Cape Horn, down around uh, South America, and that's some of the most dangerous waters you could ever try to take a ship through. And that's about six months, and people didn't make it that way. So most people went with the wagon train. So if you can imagine for a moment the sales brochure for that event, just imagine. <laughs> here's, here's what a title would say. Wagon train to California. We've only lost 10,000 people over the last 20 years and only have had 4% die from Indian attacks. Scenery is magnificent. Sign right here. You think people would sign up? Hundreds of thousands did. Why would they sign up and take on that? Because their vision was bigger than the obstacles that was holding them back. Your vision has to be bigger than the obstacles that you see in your path, either believed or real. They're still valid in your life. You have to see past that 